Well, hi, and welcome to my shop. This morning, uh, things are going to be a little different, I imagine, because I went ahead and made a few changes here late last night. Let's take a little look at them. So, so what I did was I took out the, I took out these guys, the two, uh, one microfarad electrolytic capacitors, and I put in a pile of capacitors. You can see them here. Uh, which amount to, here they are here. Thank you, autofocus, there you go. So there's two bundles of three capacitors in there. And that amounts to exactly what this radio requires, 0.25 microfarads. So I haven't turned the radio on to see if this helped out. We're going to find out shortly. By the way, some of you remember me doing all this once before in a similar radio for a similar reason. I did not have the larger capacitors in my stock and I stuck a couple of these in, but the last time around the electrolytic capacitors I stuck in were gigantic uh, 20 or 30 microfarad uh, capacitors. I thought I could get away with the one microfarad, but I have the feeling that probably this has been the problem with the radio being dead. I still don't understand how these could deaden the radio. I also have a fair bit of confusion in my head about where these capacitors are. I started thinking that they were on the heater line of the detectors, of the detector. But in fact, unless I've got it really turned around in my head again, these capacitors are on the general heater line for the other tubes. So how these could have any impact on what's happening with this tube, I, I'm really at a loss. In fact, you know what, I'm going, to, I'm going to skip on to the schematic for a minute and just refresh my head on this. Uh, because it really, and I have not, did I say this already? After I made that replacement, I have not turned this radio on to see the effect. I've been waiting till this morning so I could do it on camera so the excitement could be shared. The excitement or, or maybe disappointment. So let's just take a peek at the schematic here and uh, we'll see what's up. Okay, here's the schematic. Now the tube that I've been concerned about is this guy here and you can see his heater line because, because this takes a different uh, filament voltage from these guys. This guy has his own filament winding right there and you see there's no uh, connection to the chassis if you follow this anywhere except through this resistor there's no capacitors involved at all with this and since I was able to pick up the signal on the grid here just clears a bell how could it be these capacitors which are on the heater line for this tube, this one, this one, this one, all the others. How could this in any way influence what's happening here? I don't know. <laughs> it can't. And, and by, by the way, in the last video I, I mumbled about this diagram showing the switch. So the outer line here and the outer one here, sorry I don't have a pointer, were connected through here. No, they're not connected through there, either in the radio or even in the schematic here. I think I think I should have interpreted that as a piece of insulated material. And then I would no longer misinterpret all this, which I was. So, but no, no consequence from any of it, I don't think. Okay, maybe there will be consequences down the road. Let's see what happened with this radio. Did, did, I, did I manage to mysteriously make it work now? Of course, that would be mysterious to me. Um, for some of you who are more experienced than me, uh, you, you, you know, you may be in the "I told you so" stage <laughs> of all this. Um, another, just a comment here. Uh, in my shop, the video has become very glitchy, and I, just now a glitch went shooting through the screen in, in my shop. I don't know if that's being recorded or not, but. Not only am I having trouble here, I'm having trouble up here too. Let's hope it's not on the video. Okay, I think we're ready. I don't think I need to do anything more. Have a regular, have a regular, have my loop antenna connected. 
Let's back the volume down in anticipation of great excitement here. Oh, volume control is almost impossible to turn. I'm going to have to deal with that next, I think. Okay, here we go. Dim lights. normal. Uh, not so good so far. Okay, so this radio's got to be warmed up. Let me just flip the switch here. volume. I'm going to have to turn on my signal tracer in a moment here. Well, I'm both disappointed and not surprised at the same time. I was kind of hoping this would solve this, but I can't see how it can. So, you know, there's another, there is another capacitor implicated in this. I've left it in. You can see it in the camera there, right, right down here. It's another oversized capacitor I stuck in, but since the signal makes it all the way to the grid of the detector tube, how can any of this matter at all? Does the signal still make it to the grid? Listen to me. How disappointed. I really, <laughs> it's really very hopeful that this thing would come to life. Then I would go away scratching my head about these. And maybe, yeah. Some other day it would sort it out. It's not the way this is going here. Now, turn this down again. Signal tracer on, on RF. Just tip it a little bit here. You can see what I'm doing with it. Volume, attenuator. The attenuator works at the very front end of the radio, and the volume works in the rear end. Okay, we're going to listen to the antenna. Should hear a station. I think this is exactly how I left it. We pay $500 installation guarantee. When you need help fast, I, <laughs> call on Reliance. I need help fast. That's for sure. Okay, we're going to skip all the way through all the tubes right to the grid of the detector tube. This is what's on the grid. RF on the grid of the detector tube. Oh, it's very weak. I think the radio's been tuned. Maybe retuned. Huh. Okay, it's not... It was crystal clear yesterday. It was crystal clear yesterday when I had the big capacitors in here. Okay, let's just follow it through. Here we go. Get my hand on the right volume control here. Antenna. Oh my gosh. That's what's available. Come on. Visit Herbert's Boots for a huge selection of cat footwear. Cat offers a vast line of CSA. Okay, I'm going to turn it down a bit here on the single tracer. And without touching the volume, away we go here. That's what's left of it. So low you can't hear it. First tube, output of the first tube. I just do there. What did I just do? What did I just do? I short that? So what you couldn't see is the speaker just leaped. The speaker cone just jumped a mile over here. Well, I don't know what it bumped. It bumped something. Nothing to be heard. No wonder we're not hearing anything. 
nothing, nothing making it through the radio. Okay, so the capacitors I put in here are going to affect the operation of all these tubes. Are you going to tell me that I changed these and now it doesn't work with the proper capacitors? Is that where we're at? Holy smokes. Uh, okay, let's just calm yourself down, Jim. The volume control is a resistor on the antenna. There, I turn it up all the way, and that's probably going to fix that problem. Let's start again, right at the antenna. Five years of sales no, more than two and a half it's a little lower now, I think. We know minivans. Probably we because know the radio is taking listen. some power off the Tell antenna. Information all in one place. Okay, from there, output of the antenna. Minivans there we are. CA. Now we're cooking. Output of the first tube. Low. Input input to the second. Output from the second. Low. Input to the third. Output from the third. We're, we're, we're going downhill rapidly here. Output from here, there's not much left. Sorry. Input to this tube. Output from that tube. It's just gone. Tell me changing these has, has wrecked this radio now. They work better with the big ones in. In my mind, it should work better with the big ones. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is not at all what I was expecting here. Maybe the radio's not tuned on the money. Let's let's check that. Okay, so yeah, the volumes. If the radio were working, we would hear it screaming out of its own speaker right now, so it's the volumes are right up. Okay, let's let's try tuning it. Play physical basketball. Speak of the devil. There we are. Okay, turn her down. There's too many things to tune here all at once. Let's start over. Now that I know what's going on. First, we will make sure my signal generator, my uh, signal tracer, is tuned properly. Okay, so uh, yesterday's conversation on Canadian radio and television was Raptors, will they win the second game? And today's uh, conversation is a deflated licking of the wounds because uh, the Raptors lost their second game. It's just a big deal here in Canada. Yeah. Here we go. We're going to go to the output of this tube and then we're going to tune. Now we're going to tune from here. Okay, so as far as that tube is concerned, this radio is tuned. So we're going to leave it the way it is now and go right to the grid here. Hot diggity dog. Now we're back. We're backed. We're back to the problem we were at yesterday. So changing these doesn't seem to have had much effect at all, which is really kind of what I was thinking. So on the grid of this tube is this powerful signal. Coming out of this tube is nothing. Changing the tube with another tube made no difference. Am I crazy? Didn't this radio work when I first got it? And my comment was, don't do anything bad to it. <laughs> it's a little too late for that. Okay, so. The only thing I've done that's bad is I can't figure out what's going on. That's what's bad. Let's just listen to this grid again. That's pretty simple logic. It's just beautiful getting to that grid. And then off the plate, now that's RF, shouldn't really be there. So the RF, let's move the camera here. This is the plate. 
just keep staring at it. That's RF. It travels through this coil. Nothing left. There's any question that this is the same, that this switch is closed properly. Truce of Sunday night. I mean, did you see social media? NBA players were waiting. Okay, another possibility is that the uh, capacitor resistor combination here is not working out in terms of producing a proper bias on the 27 tube. And exactly what that should be, I don't know. And if the bias is incorrect on this tube, perhaps it's in cutoff. The plate voltage would also be a big deal. We already checked that before. Let's check it again. It's supposed to be around 40. Forty on the plate. Forty-seven. And the voltage on the grid. Now it's just is kind of crazy trying to read it with a, a meter like this. But let's just give it a try. What I was expecting was you'd get a high negative number here, like maybe minus 2, and it would quickly drop to minus 0.5, suggesting it bleeded off the charge with the meter. But what I saw was the opposite. It seemed to me it got more negative, just like maybe two, like just one refresh on the meter, it looked like it went more negative. Let's try it again. So first thing I saw was minus 0.4 and then minus 0.6. That's not too surprising. I'm, I'm introducing some stuff here, um, some some signal, some stuff, some signal here that might be causing the bias to vary in this arrangement. So what's that proving? Well, I got to look in my book. We must look in the book. But first, we must find the book. I remember thinking, oh, I'm going to have to put this in a new place from now on. Here it is. <laughs> 227. What, what happens to me in my shop here is I work longer and longer on the same radio. I get more and more disorganized in the shop. 27, not 22. 27, 27. Think, think, man. Did I say how cold a day it is here today? Sunny all day, high of 11. 11. Unbelievable. Oh, doesn't say much here. 27. Heater volts, 2.5. Uh, maximum ratings characteristics, class A. Plate volts, 250. Grid volts, minus 21 when you have a plate voltage of 250. Plate resistance, transconductance. So this isn't going to help us understand what's going on with a plate voltage of 40. Minus 21. Well, it's nowhere near that. How am I supposed to know what's what's proper there? Um, so let's think about this now. If it's if it's if it's not very negative, that's not going to cut the tube off. It's getting too negative that cuts it off. What is cutting it off? If the uh, signal comes out here. There's a capacitor here to drain off some of the RF right into the chassis. This is a ground connection here. If this guy was not draining it off, uh, if it was open, if this guy was open, we would just have more RF than would be there and the choke here would have to try to choke all that away. Maybe it couldn't and we'd find a little bit here. What's the implication of that? Not much. Not much really. Um, so what if this is shorted, we'd have no B plus. 
these are probably quite reliable these uh, the style of capacitor so <laughs> so here I am facing exactly the same situation here with two different 27 tubes I pulled the tube out I read right in the socket to make sure what was on here was making it right into the tube we know something is making it into the tube and out because we can pick it up on the uh, plate we can pick up the RF side of it on the plate let me just mention my, on, on my own home my own video here in the shop there is a lot of video glitching going on like a lot oh boy I hope that's not being recorded <laughs> uh, they mean I'm doing myself a favor if the video fails at this point this is just the nuttiest situation. What what else could be wrong? Uh, cathode no longer grounded. Now how could that be? I haven't looked into this possibility. Cathode. So wow, that's a that's a fat chance. Um, okay, just using this as a pointer. That's the cathode. It's heater heater cathode grid plate cathode right here and there there's a wire and boy if that isn't going down to the ground I don't know what is right there Yeah, I'm really down to two defective 27 tubes, which just doesn't sound very likely. And they both behave the same way. I'm really, really at a loss here. Really, really at a loss. Okay, let's let's switch the 27 tubes here. Just maybe I'm wacko here. could be very loud if it suddenly started working. So th this tube tests just above the reject point on my tube tester and this one tests just below. <coughs> Certainly don't hear anything new coming out of the speaker. RF? Um, but they were able to withstand Great. the barrage RF plate. That's the musical tube. The musical tube even tell even tells you very clearly that this tube is able to drive a signal right to the speaker. You know, it's got to be it's got to be grid potential. <clears throat> okay, so what could go wrong with the grid? Well, it's got another one of those capacitors. So it's got this combination resistor capacitor. The uh, it's not much voltage on it or anything. I've done an ohmmeter test on it, but it's 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 somewhat bogus. This guy appears to be replaced. I could disconnect this wire, arrange my own capacitor resistor combination fire the signal through my own combination into here. I could leave this just as it is. And that would prove that this is good or bad, I think. So let's take a look on the schematic and find out what exactly that is. That shouldn't be too hard to do at all. Why is my system so glitchy? Oh my gosh. Something's gonna something's gonna go <coughs> something's gonna fail soon. Okay, here we go. Okay, so we want to study the, the these two guys here, C3 and R9. So the ground, the, the grid is grounded on the far side of the transformer. 
transformer's output goes through this uh, capacitor a little bit would make it through the resistor. When we touch here, we hear the signal beautifully. When we touch here, we hear nothing. Yet, microphonics on that will go through and come out the speaker. So the question is, is this thing biased stupidly? for a minute. Is there anything else here that could just... So we've measured a small negative voltage here. I kind of suggest the capacitor is good. What if the resistor is open? I don't think it is. So R9 is a half mega ohm and C... 3.00025. So I'm going to make up one of those. I'm going to stick it in the radio and we're going to try this thing again with an alternate set here. That's my plan. to simply nip off this wire and desolder it here. And I'll nip it off, hook this up, hook it over there, and we're in business. Well, we'll <laughs> yeah, we'll see if we're in business. So just in cutting away the little coil wire there, it kind of really revealed how much monkey business has gone on here. focus is fighting me here um, so what, what's all this nonsense here somebody has so I'm pretty sure this is a replacement here somebody's done something with it okay just got to carry on getting the end of that wire ready original 27 back in. Whack. Are we ready for another attempt? This this doesn't make sense to me. Well, you know what? It could. could maybe make, make sense. I, I was going to say, if you have the RF signal on the grid of the tube, how can how can this matter? Well, it's about the bias of the tube. That's, that's what it is. So. Okay, here we go. Oh, let's leave this here because I may want to try and read that bias potential again. Okay, full power. If, we, if it's working, if we would hear it. We would hear it right now. Okay. Coming in on the antenna. Warriors tied up a one game. 
piece, and as I said, going into the on the end, on the grid. The Raptors, as uh, uh, just you know, as Jared and Bowmanville says, what they've been great for seven and a half quarters. There's people just lamenting about the Raptors now. Hey, it's only the second game out of seven. <sighs> I, I am just totally flummoxed here. Um, something really weird is going on. Pretty sure. <laughs> We'd be pretty sure of that. Um, wow. I, I don't know what to think. Uh, just every idea that rolls quickly through my head gets thrown out right away. The other tube is microphonic. This one's a little microphonic too. Did I for sure have the volume up? I must have the volume up for the signal to get to the grid. Voltage of the grid. Volt bias of the grid. Bias of the grid. Did it make any difference what we did there? My guess is none whatsoever. Okay, so it was minus four going to minus six and settling. Minus 0.6. Not exactly the same. Exactly the same. Well, we're getting to find out more and more about what it what it's not, but what it is is not coming through here. Wow. So uh, that's it. I've, I've exhausted my supply of ideas today. I really thought this was going <laughs> to fix it all. Although, as I mentioned, in thinking about it more, I can't see how this would affect this. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm back down to two defective 27 tubes. Defective in exactly the same way. One of them testing okay on my tube tester. That doesn't add up, does it? Even a failure in the socket doesn't add up because there's some RF on the plate. Oh my god. One of you knows exactly what's going on. Is it you? Do you know exactly what's going on? Uh, you know, I don't, uh, I don't go into my feelings about comments and that. I certainly appreciate them, but I don't read them all. So perhaps one of you has actually made a comment of exactly what's going on here. And uh, I have not availed myself of it, but that's okay. I kind of like going at it the hard way here. This is definitely, this is definitely, this has definitely got me. I think that's it for today. It's another beautiful, sunny, but cold day. So I'm going to be outside doing more stuff. And that's it for being in here. So thanks a lot for watching. Uh, I will be reading the comments on this video. Uh, if anybody thinks they know exactly what it is I need to do to make this thing work at this point, make a comment. I'm going to read it. Uh, but I will be in here again in a day or two. So uh, comments coming four or five days down the road probably won't matter. Anyway, thanks a lot, and uh, good luck to everyone.